You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Brewski. Featuring former federal prosecutor and president of West Coast Trial Lawyers, Nima Ramani. Well, Charlie's going to jail. We knew that already. Charlie Adelson, that is. But then the speculation began. Who else was involved in this murder for hire plot? That's one of the big questions that is now apparently starting to be answered with Donna Adelson being arrested at the Miami-Dade International Airport, attempting to go on a little trip to Dubai and then maybe Vietnam. Why not? A country that doesn't have an extradition agreement with the United States. Joining us to discuss, Nima Romani, former federal prosecutor, president of West Coast Trial Lawyers Association. Yeah, so should she have done this sooner before the verdict came in? Or <laughs> was this really bad timing on her part of attempting to flee the country? Definitely should have done it sooner, Tony. I would never, ever advise anyone to flee the <laughs> jurisdiction. Obviously, we know, we've talked about it many times on the show, fly every single state. That's consciousness of guilt. But I think this just really shows how the Adelsons, I mean, just were so disconnected and really didn't have an understanding of our criminal justice system. And for years, we've been asking, you know, why was it just Garcia or McBanawa? What about the people that actually were shot callers in this murder for hire case why weren't they brought to justice but i really think that charlie thought he was actually going to get away with this i mean it just sort of baffles the mind how uh, frankly stupid some people are but apparently mom was one of them and she thought he wouldn't be convicted and then she started talking about her suicide in her flight so i'm not surprised that she was charged. Really, the only surprise is why did it take so long? Exactly. I mean, they certainly went after Charlie, you know, first of all. Did they know all along that there was more involvement here with the family? But in order to get essentially the evidence for the others, they had to go down his road first. Well, I think, look, you want to prosecute Charlie first. He's the closest to all of this, right? He had the most to gain. But look, mom was there. Mom was involved in you know, the Dolce uh, Vita meeting, she clearly knew what was going on. You know, she was a participant in, you know, signing some of these checks to Catherine and, you know, making the payments for the murder, frankly. So, you know, if I were prosecuting the case, I would have charged everyone at once, make them flip, roll against each other. You know, this sort of this sequential prosecution didn't make a whole lot of sense, Tony, but I'm glad that, you know, justice is finally being done in this case. Do you think we're going to see other family members of the Adelson family facing charges in the near future as well? You know, I think you're dealing with Charlie and his mom. You know, this is a case that I covered, you know, live, Court TV, long time they were covering it. So, you know, as far as the others, and really it's the sister, right? Markel's wife, yeah. that would probably be the closest. I didn't see a whole lot of evidence against her compared to the other two. I think they seemed to sort of isolate her from it, even though, frankly, she had the most to gain, right? Because she was the one engaged in this custody dispute. But I don't think we're there yet. And I think if prosecutors were going to charge her, they'd probably charge her now. And the last thing you want to do is give her the opportunity to take off. I think this is probably the end of the road for the folks involved. And I think we're now five and counting for the murder of Dan Markell. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it just conjecture here uh, on this. She really would be the one to have the most to gain. Or are we to believe that this is, is more so a selfish thing on the part of the family, on the part of, I think, mom, I think might have been the driving force behind a lot of this, of wanting to be close to the grandkids, wanting her kids near her. And the only way to do that was this sort of path because dad didn't want to go. Dad was a good dad. There was no, it wasn't an abusive situation or anything like that where someone was self-defending. It seems that this was very much driven by her own narcissistic and, and selfish needs. But did all this happen without his ex-wife having any knowledge of it? I mean, it, it's kind of a crazy thing to think about, but in this specific case, I could kind of almost see it. I mean, the other one that comes to mind is the, the Shanna Gardner Fernandez case with with Mario Saldana, her husband, and her not being arrested forever, but now being charged also with first degree murder. Can we? Is that a plausible route that the, the ex wife had no idea here? It's possible. And the thing about this case is, I mean, one, it took a long time, but the advantage was you have a lot of recordings and wiretaps after the murder, right? Mm -hmm. You don't typically have these in a state case because usually, right, someone's killed. You know, prosecutors, detectives, everyone gets involved, investigators, and, you know, they end up making an arrest. 
not a situation like here where you got, you know, the FBI and they're surveilling someone for years, right? How often does that happen when you have the feds involved in a case like this? Mm -hmm. Maybe if it's an unsolved case like Koberger, but you have a lot more information than you would typically have, frankly, because it took so long. So when you're analyzing those recordings, you're analyzing the wiretaps. I mean, you nailed it, Tony. You have, you've heard a helicopter's mom, so you got a helicopter grandma here, someone who's just completely involved in her daughter's life and her relationship, even though after Markel's dead, you hear her talking to her son about, you know, she is the sister dating the right person. And, you know, we want to introduce her to people and who she bring in the Thanksgiving that's coming up and just a very sort of strange familial relationship here. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if grandma was really pulling the strings here. Maybe she's a matriarch of the family, but I mean, it really went so far as to, have someone killed. But again, I just think you have a lot more color and a lot more evidence that you would typically have because of all those recordings and wiretaps. Yeah, I agree. I think she's the type of person when you have books about narcissistic mothers or mothers-in-law and trying to survive them, she should be on the cover. I mean, she literally is the, the most extreme example of it, which now has led to murder and obviously her being charged. But I, I think that this is, yeah, she takes the cake uh, for narcissistic she does, mom of the year. Yeah, poor. Poor Professor Markell is going to be on the cover of Monster in Law with his brother in law and mother in law. Yeah. You know, that had him whack. Exactly. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.